I refilmed and re-edited this video a few times because I had no idea how to go with it. But last year, I doodled my favorite toes of 2017, and while flipping through that sketchbook, I decided to make a video of the tools that I frequently use this year, which may or may not necessarily be my favorites. So my most used sketching tools of 2018 are the Prismacolor Colorize in Carmine Red, the Polomino Blackwing in Pearl, I think, which is the same as the 3B, a collection of Pilot Inno mechanical pencils in various colors, the big ballpoint pens, the Pilot friction pens, and the Uni Kurotoga mechanical pencils. Along with the tools to make mark, I also use these tools for the sketching stage, such as the Fiber Castell PCV free eraser that I bought, I think, a hundred of them a few years ago, and they've still been my favorite. The Faber Castell Needleball Eraser, the Coom Long Point Sharpener, and a blue sharpener that I got free with my Faber Castell coloring pencils. I have not found a sharpener that beats it. <laughs> The thing I dislike about kneaded eraser is how easily dirty they get and when they do get dirty, it gets really smelly. I'm sure there's a way to fix it but I haven't found a method that works yet. I do love playing and making shapes out of them when I'm bored, which is most of the time. <laughs> I have the entire set of Pilot Inno mechanical pencils, but these four are my most used colors. I love not having to sharpen these, but I feel like the lead and light blue one does snap a lot easily, which kind of really annoys me. The Coom sharpener is a bit unique compared to the average sharpener. There are two holes. The first is to strip the wood away from the lead and the second to actually sharpen the lead. This is to create a longer point on pencils, which I think is to waste less of the lead, but I'm not really sure. I just like how sharp it gets. As for the ink-based sketching tools, they have a slightly different feel compared to using a pencil. I'm not quite sure what exactly it is, but I enjoy it a lot. The friction pens that I can erase with heat, they have a thicker sort of milkier viscous kind of ink, and places that I have erased don't work the same afterwards. The big ballpoint pens are just inexpensive and handy. They are also a needle point, I think 0 0.3 compared to other ballpoint pen which I prefer. My lining tools include the Stedler pigment liners, the Uni pen fine liners, the Sharpie pen, the Sakura microns in various colors, the Tom Bofunoski pens, and the Tachikawa nib holder with various nibs from Zebra. I also do have a unbranded glass dip pen and calligraphy pen, especially the Platinum Preppy. Oh, and of course the famous gel pen from Pentel. <laughs> How could I forget that? I usually fill the Platinum Preppy with drying ink, which I know is a taboo because it's bad for the nibs, but these calligraphy pens are very inexpensive and they are made to be disposable, so I don't really mind. Um, and also, I'm just a lazy person to constantly find my bottle of inks and open them. <laughs> Prismacolor Premier Color Pencils are very buttery, but they tend to break very easily, and that's a pet peeve of mine. In this tin, I have a few Faber Castell Polychromos, which are the colors I use often, such as Indigo. So the ones that I don't sit in this beautiful leather case instead. Um, these are my miscellaneous. I think tools that I commonly use, which are the painter's tape, these inexpensive plastic palettes, Liquitex acrylic inks in white and black, and PH Martin Black Star High Carb ink. I do refill my fine liners with the high carb ink, but it's a process that you need to be very careful with because it can destroy the nib, which makes the pan useless, and overfilling causes this mess. Another thing about refilling them is that I cannot leave the cap off the pan or it will fully dry and become useless. 
So I have a love-hate relationship with the Sakura Micons. They aren't sold here locally so I have to order them online and for some reason they usually arrive exploded or dry but this is the only line of fine liners that have a variety of waterproof colors so that's the only reason why I like them. The differences between the two dip pens is the line weight that I can get. The one with the nib have a larger range while the glass dip pen gives a very uniform line so they can be used for different purposes. I didn't record the fountain pens, I forgot. <laughs> That's my only reason, but they are there. So brushes, I might have an addiction, seriously, but these are not only my most commonly used brushes but also my favourite. This includes the silver velvet round brushes, any round number 2 brushes, I don't mind the brand for that, Princeton flat and filbert brushes, textured and stiff brushes that are usually for crafting such as the Royal Atlantico Crafter brush a lot of detail brushes, especially with fat handles like these ones. The Arteza and Kuratake Aqua water brushes, and of course these two large wash brushes. When painting, I wash my brushes in these two mason jars, which I placed a makeup brush cleaner pad into so it gets rid of most of the paint. My most commonly used sketchbook is the Honey Mullet Draw and Sketch sketchbook. I only like this for the size and dimension, but I actually really dislike the paper. The Mastery Watercolor Sketchbook is something I bought to doodle smaller water-based medium drawings on. And I followed a YouTube trend and purchased the Canson Mixed Media XL Sketchbook since everyone was raving about it, but I only... 25% like it. The paper that I use the most is the Hot and Cold Press Studio Paper from Fabriano. I'm falling in love with painting on the hot press paper a lot more. I usually take these onto these black chipboards which are <laughs> spare parts <laughs> from my bookcases. And the paint that I use on these paper my first custom palette is filled with my favorite paints, watercolor, gouache, and hybrid of the two for Magello, Shanhan, Winston Newton, Daniel Smith, and Holbein that I placed into a small tin palette that I got from eBay. The next palette is also a custom. It's made using a cute pill box from eBay and contains neutrals. My favorite mix of ultramarine and Venetian red and white gouache. For pre-made watercolor sets, I love using the Russian Paints White Nights. These are inexpensive, easy to use, bright, vivid colors, but they do tend to dry a little lighter. They are also very sticky and smell artificially sweet compared to other paints, but other than that, I'm very happy using them. My favorite brand of watercolors is, no surprise, it's the Magello, both student and artist grade. I cannot choose a actual set or palette out of all of the ones I have because I have nothing bad to say about them other than some paints having strange light fastness, but that's not a problem to me since I don't hang my paintings or sell them. Maybe a downside is that it's too bright and vivid and intense sometimes, which makes it lose some of the natural vibe that you want from a painting. And since I'm a fan of vibrant paints, I decided to try gouache last year. I still haven't created anything nice with just gouache as the main medium, but I do sometimes paint half watercolor, half gouache. I tried other brands before, but these Holbein Artist Gouache are by far my favorite because they don't have that dry, chalky feel that most gouache does have. The last two are mica paints. They are 
from the Fine Tech brand. I have the Gold palette and a Pearl Iridescent set which I use for embellishments and any additional extra pop that I want for a painting. I've tried many gold and iridescent shiny fashion colors, whatever you call them, uh, before but this is by far the palette that I always reach for and purchase when it comes to these types of paint. I, I know I can always trust them. And that's it. That's all my most currently used tools of 2018. And it's interesting to see the change in preferences from last year. Some of them still remain as my favorite while others I use as part of convenience when I continue my unnecessary search and journey to accumulate more supplies. <laughs> I cannot wait to see how it changes again next year and I kinda do hope the list doesn't get longer and gets shorter instead. And so thank you for watching, until next time, happy painting, bye!